Righto, today's little project or little test is uh, actually street bounty. So street bounty, anything that you find on the side of the road that someone else has thrown out because they don't want it or they just love the look of landfill. So this is an AVR 591 released May 2010, uh, about 530 Australian dollars. This one was out in the rain, dried it off, bang, fired up first time. Now this one did not come with a remote control. Here we go. We've got some sound there. Sounds like hunters and collectors. Uh, this one did not come with a remote control. So, the reason that's important is you can't really use this amplifier without a remote control. But let's go a little bit more in depth into the amp and see what we can find out. See if it's still worth listening to or looking out for in 2023. So that's the front, that's the back panel. So basically what do you get? You get one, two, three, four HDMI, one HDMI out. Now these are 1.4A HDMI, which means they support both 3D and also audio pass-through, which means that they can support uh, audio backwards and forwards. It's also got ARC, which is audio return channel, and I'll talk about that in a sec. You've also got a TOSLink, which is optical, SPDIF. You've also got a coax, you've got one, two, three, analog RCA's down there, speaker binding posts for front, centre and surrounds. So you don't have speaker binding posts for B speakers or remote speakers, but what you can do is you can amplify the outputs here so that you can have pre-outs uh, for a second amplifier to run B speakers. So you've also got um, RGB, so that's a signable component and one, two, three composite. So fairly basic. But this does have a bit of a hidden gem for its age and I'll show you that in a second. So the ace that this amplifier has is on-screen display. So here we go, use my trusty remote. Now this remote is a third party $12 eBay special RC1149 if you're looking for one. So all of the functions are duplicated. You've got, let me see if I can focus that. Yeah. You've got quick selection, Blu-ray disc, satellite, and also an iPod dock. So this is optimised for iPod uh, use, and it's an, be an old 30-pin iPod dock, considering this is from 2010. So if I press menu, we go. We've got a couple of different functions here: audio adjust. You've got information on signal. You've got information on HDMI status. You can go to automatic setup mode using an Odyssey setup mic, and I just happen to have an Odyssey setup mic here from another project. You can see that's a legitimate uh, Denon Odyssey setup mic. Now you actually don't need a special Odyssey mic when you're doing these tests. All you need is any microphone with a long enough lead that's got a three and a half mil mono plug there that you can see. So that's a genuine one and I've got plenty of these microphones with long leads and you can use anything you like as long as it's got a mono three and a half mil plug. These are all the channels that I've manually put in, which are east coast of Australia channels. You can put in 56 storage locations, only 8 for AM. Not really uh, suitable for, for uh, AM users here. So let's go back. You can also do direct frequency entry if you want. So this is our front panel. Got a master volume on the right hand side. Got some basic menu buttons here. Got return, got surround mode menu button and then quick select. So quick select allows you to go into some basic uh, programming. Uh, you can select the source, you can rotate that through dock, VOGS, game, satellite, TV, DVD, Blu-ray and back to the tuner. So now if I plug in this 3.5mm mic, watch what happens. Goes into calibration and also automatically detects on your monitor that you've got a Odyssey microphone plugged in and then you can start your test. So we'll do that, we'll press start. So basically it'll go through, do all five speakers. Note, this is not a seven channel amplifier. So it can only do 5.1. My speaking is gonna interrupt it, but I'm gonna cancel this in a second. I just wanted to show you 
what it was like and what the process was that was an Odyssey auto speaker tuning. So it'll calibrate distance, it'll calibrate frequency response. I don't know if this one does phase. I've got an AVR2805, which is my primary home theater amp. It does phase detection, and I've got other amplifiers that have also done uh, do phase detection automatically, which is pretty neat. So we'll just cancel that. Cancel, get out of there. Cancel the order setup. So basically, this is the very, very, uh, now you can also go, if you've, if you've already done a check, you can check your speaker configuration. So you can see what sort of uh, speakers you've got. You can see what, whether you've got a subwoofer or not. You can basically check whatever you like. You can also check distances. So these are just some generics. And you can also adjust channel level, which is quite handy. So this is the, the start of the, uh, the test that I did, and it did save some parameters. You can do uh, crossovers, which is pretty neat. Here we go. So you can either use a, an Odyssey uh, tune or a flat tune. So Odyssey will basically use the room acoustics and flat will just be flat, zero dB across all frequencies. You can also restore that to factory. So I'll do that. Yep, all right, done. So go back, go back. So basically it's a fairly standard amp. Uh, I'm not gonna test volume. The t speakers I'm using for the test are just some, basically they are also council throwouts. Nothing special at all, but it just lets me test this. And this has got 120 watts per channel, this amplifier, and it's got five discrete amplifiers, so that's pretty good. So if I want to change the surround mode, is the mute on this. If I press mute, it just kills the sound entirely. On my Denon and on, on my AVR2805 and on some of the other amps that I've tested, the muting is actually adjustable in either minus 10 or minus 20 dB increments. So we'll just jump out, back into the menu again. You go to audio adjust, you can change. You got audio delay so you can sync audio and video if you need to. If you've got uh, syncing issues with a DVD or a Blu-ray, uh, you generally don't, but it's there. Restorer. So Restorer is basically, uh, it, it's like a loudness feature, and you've got three different levels of Restorer. Uh, so basically that adds a little bit more punch, like a loud, like a, a, a 10 dB boost at 100 hertz and 10 kilohertz, which is the good old loud button on car stereos from the 1980s. So that's basically what that does. So I'll, I'll put that on. Now the other thing that this does is it's got dynamic volume and dynamic EQ, and dynamic volume and dynamic EQ uh, basically are internal uh, digital compression controls that allow you to modulate the difference between loud signals and soft signals. So what I am playing with is I've got an old VCR and I want to change one of the input assigns. So I'm going to go to input setup. So you can change, here we go. So if we go to uh, DVD for the video, and if we go to input assign, so this is where you can get into all of the different source assigns and allocate audio to each video. So you could have component or sorry, composite audio left and right from RCA into a composite video stream or an H HDMI video stream, uh, etc. Righto, to give this a bit of a contextual age, I've got a DVD here. Yes, it is Star Wars remastered from 1997 and a video player. So if I press play, I've set that up. So we actually get the screen and you can go, you can see here that if I go into input there, the video source is DVD, the video mode is auto. You can change all of those things. So it's quite adaptable. You kind of need to know what you're doing to get out of that uh, you can just press return. Now the other thing that I've got is a DVD which is connected via HDMI. So I've got this going through satellite CBL. So if I open that, oh, sounds fantastic. Put in my test DVD, which happens to be 
David Helfgott. So now I've got the DVD playing through HDMI. Got mute on. If I click, if I rotate the volume knob, it kills the mute. And there's our 570 interlaced source. Oh, David Helfgott getting a little bit jiggy with it. That's pretty much this amplifier. So the things I really like about it, you get a ton of power. 120 watts by five channels is plenty. It's got audio return channel and it's got something called CEC. It's got analog video up conversion to HDMI, so it'll up convert that really, really rubbish uh, VHS signal into 1080p, although, as they say, you can't polish a turd. You get six measurement points with the Odyssey mic, so I'll pull that out because we're not using that anymore. You've got dynamic volume adjustable between three modes, maximum, middle, and uh, minimum, which is called midnight, evening, or day can actually buy a Denon dedicated internet radio plug-in device uh, for this, which I don't have. You've got very low standby power, just 0.1 of a watt. You've got audio delay, as I said. You've got uh, the, the automatic speaker setup, which I really quite like. And it's also got plenty of uh, surround modes. So PLL Cinema, so that we're, we're in a video mode now, so we can flick through the available decoding programs. Neo DTS6, multi-channel, rock arena, Jazz, mono movie, video game, matrix, virtual, direct. So that bypasses all of the tone controls. Standard stereo, and probably DTS is probably what I would use because it basically interpolates from a two channel signal into a five channel output. So the other the things that I don't like, I don't like the fact that without a remote control, this amplifier is basically you get only get about half of the functionality because you just cannot use the tuner without it. I also don't like the fact that there are no B speakers that you can connect to this. You've got some controls at the front, you've got sleep, you've got the restorer, uh, you've got dynamic equalization. Dynamic equalization is the compression that I was talking about before. You've got these are the three compression. You've got the Odyssey mic or flat. So you've got all sorts of different options there. You've got a dimmer for the front. And, and it tells you what, it says, uh, okay, signal is PCM, pulse curve modulation. So it tells you quite a bit of information on the front, but you just, the thing is that you just can't use a tuner from the front. Apart from that, a very competent amplifier. The fact that this one was free is an absolute bonus. No HDMI on the front, just the setup mic uh, and a composite video and audio left and right. So if you find one of these, AVR591, grab it. It's probably not a bad amp, but if, if it doesn't have the remote, I'd leave it on the side of the road where you found it.